And we're back to do the segment. I have my guest with me, Neil Lante Van der Poel, is a member of parliament for the Ododododio constituency. Good morning to you, Neil. How are you? I'm blessed. Boss Van P. All right. Mm. And then also I have here, um, I, didn't, I, I didn't see him within the Yulta period. I'm sure he was around, or traveled a bit, but he's no, back. No, no. Okay. No way. Um, okay. Anyway. And Emmanuel Chamantinge Jakun um, is a member of parliament for the Ayawaso West Wagon, very familiar with the Lagos Avenue where we have Yabidu Roasting Plantain, whose um, son is enjoying free SHS. Yep. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. <laughs> happy name, happy what, New Year to you. Happy New Year. What's the name of the avenue? I don't like stopping in the evening. Where? Lagos Avenue. Is it Lagos Avenue? Where? The main road around the yeah. Men's Vigo. Uh, that's yeah. the Lagos Avenue. It's Lagos Avenue. The one, especially right after the Men's Vigo, the one you're heading yes. towards yes. the, the Why don't you area. like to stop there? Huh? Especially <laughs> from 10 p.m. No, no, no. If my car breaks down there, I will leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the things you see there. I like what sometimes. You see? Well, sometimes when I go out in the night, I like driving through there. Ah. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Seeing the things that happen in a crowd. What do you see? You are free to do that, but not me. Yeah, sure. Not sure. me, maybe not him. Sure, 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 sure. The people's conceptions are different. Why, why, what is, why are you putting my constituency in such a poor light? What oh. It's what, one of the it, flash areas it? in Accra, right? Yeah, what yeah, what is know. it there that you don't want to stop? Uh, there's, a, there's an infestation in your constituency. <laughs> that's <one>. Infestation <laughs> Lagos, of what? Lagos Avenue. <laughs> infestation is it not Lagos Avenue? That yeah. main road. Yeah. Uh, from NJ Hill down, up there. There are some yeah. dangerous species of yeah, human beings. They happen there, there so. all the time. <laughs> and I don't know, there's a, there's a story. It, it used to be around the Togo Embassy area there, but <laughs> they migrated. They are still there. They are still around Togo, Togo. yeah. You know, I used Masu. to stay at cantonments. Yeah. And then even when I'm going home, I'm still, still comfortable. There. So I always want to use Christ the King Road. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, well. Anyway, there's a story on page 16 of the paper, um, the Daily Graphic. It says, River God forbid girls from school. Girls in communities in the Upper Dintra East Municipality in the Central Region who travel across the Ophin River to attend school on the other side of the river are forbidden apparently to cross the river on Tuesdays. They are also not allowed to cross the river when they are having their menstruations. Okay? And the order supposed to be from the river gods is adversely affecting the performance of girls, uh, especially when they go and sit in the BEC in the region. The Upper uh, Dintra East um, a more for secured supervisor of education made this known at a meeting of heads of senior of junior high schools in the central region in Cape Coast. Now, I don't know, we still have all these traditions ongoing. Now, I have to tell you with uh, Neil and Tivanda Poyer on this. Well, thank you very much. Let me say Happy New Year to our cherished viewers. Um, just as um, I entered this place, I felt a bit down because over the weekend, my brother and I. Uh, were at the funeral of one of our uh, illustrious journalists who we always meet every Tuesday when we come here yeah. because he always come to your sister radio uh, TV station Adob, and Laji Beture. Let me the opportunity of saying uh, condolences and sympathies to his family. Um, I think he's paid his due for Ghana and um, it's, it's good we celebrate uh, his memory. So may his good works linger on. To the issue, let me first say that um, this is not peculiar to the Upper Digital District. It abounds all over the country, especially in societies and communities where the cultural and traditional beliefs are so entrenched um, in the daily activities of the people. And as such, um, you may see it from an angle of discrimination, but that is what our forefathers came to ordain and institute. They did it for good reasons. Um, one of the reasons I have been told those days is the fact that the rivers were the only sources of drinking, you know, potable water to them at that time. And as such, those days, uh, ladies and girls um, go to a riverside and supposing if they are in a menstrual period, they end up polluting the water. And as such, they debat girls and ladies from going to a riverside when they are in their menstrual period. I think it is for good reason, and I think. But today, 
in this modern day and age, what I believe we should be doing is for us to educate our communities and our people, to let them understand that current trends make the woman more secured and, with, and not any danger at all to our communities and our people and our waters, even if they should bath or swim in the rivers, even when they, were in their, they are in their period. We have to engage our people to let them understand, do advocacy. And I believe that this, is, this behoves of a lot of our ladies, advocacy groups, to go to these communities and explain to them, show them some of the new trends in securing, uh, 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 let me say, women when they are in their period. Um, when it comes to particular days, I know that uh, in, in a lot of our communities, certain days, um, not only women, but communities and people are barred from, from going anywhere near those rivers. I grew up in Abisim Sunyai, and I know on Tuesdays, you don't go anywhere near the river Tano, for example. As a gang boy, I know on Tuesdays, we don't go for fishing. So most communities grew up with certain, uh, let me say, restrictions, certain taboos, and, and those things helped us cohesively grow up together. But these days, um, I don't know, I, I've, I'm yet to find out whether those restrictions are now meant for only girls. Because I know that it's a, it's a general rule, everybody. You don't farm on particular days. You don't go near the riverside on particular days. You don't go fishing on particular days, depending on the areas that you live in. But this one, that girls in particular don't cross the river on Tuesdays, is a bit extreme to me. And uh, I think I'll have to investigate further to know whether it's an entrenched thing in that area or there are other communities that also practice that. But as for the menstruation, that's what I know that it was quite, uh, 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 let me say, national, it's quite extensive, it's quite uh, um, prevalent in most of the uh, communities where water, because I remember when I was doing national service in that same district, there was a community where the Bentisi River also flows. And it was true that Tuesdays on the particular day, uh, ladies, when you are your period, you don't go near, near the stream. Because, you know, those days, you get to the stream, you also walk in before you fetch w the water. So our elders thought that doing that, you pollute the river. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, uh, um, um, Roland, thank you for having me this morning. Mm. Good morning to you. Good and morning happy to new year to you. Uh, Nila, the happy new year. I met you. Yeah. Yeah, my yes. And uh, like he said, um, over the weekend, I think on Saturday, yeah. Uh, we had the painful duty to go and mourn with the family of Alaji Bature. Uh, I met him in 2009 on, I'd heard, I've heard him on, I'd heard him previously on radio, the famous Alaji. or infamous, how, however you contrive it, <laughs> uh, Alaji, Alaji. Alaji and Alaji, I, I, I think it was infamous. Uh, but. Uh, but I, I started interacting with him on a Kusi saying in 2009. Um, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a man who had the courage to speak his conviction, albeit as far as I'm concerned, his, convic his convictions were, were, were wrong, were... Contrary to yours. No. Well, contrary to mine, but uh, fact for fact, I... I he was a huge propagandist, but, but I like him because he, he would stick his ground, even if what he was saying was not factual, he would stick his ground. He, 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 I think he went through his storylines well and, and, and... The narrations were correct. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I think, I think it, is, it is sad that he, he passed. You know, it, it brings me back to when, when Kaba passed and not to remind his family and his friends I sat in this chair and said, we must begin to look at, uh, at our health status. You know, all of us take, take everything for granted. And all of us live under the illusion that nothing will happen to us. 
uh, look, in the past, the biggest challenges to, uh, the, or the biggest challenge to, all, to, to, to us as a developing country was, was what you call the communicable diseases. I mean, you would die from a malaria or from a pneumonia or from a dysentery. But with advances in public health, you probably will survive a malaria. You probably will. Nothing will happen to you if you have a pneumonia. There are powerful antibiotics that will, 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 will help you. But increasingly, uh, uh, the, the health challenge has moved to uh, lifestyle diseases, non-communicable diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and the cancers. Uh, let all of us get it. The stresses of life, the changing lifestyles, will bring diabetes and hypertension to us. I am, I am informed, and I stand corrected, that he collapsed. I am certain mm. that it was, it was probably due to, they, they call it a cardiovascular accident. He, just too much blood pressure, just burst the brain. Uh, a vessel in his brain, you know, and, and didn't survive. I, I can't for my life believe that <laughs> Elijah Baturi would walk up and down and not know that he has hypertension. Probably he was not even taking his medication. He assumed that if I take it for one month, I will be okay. Hypertension does not go away. Diabetes does not go away. You must manage it. I have a condition. I remember vividly that. Uh, I have a condition. I take my medicine every day. I am able to do all the things I need to do. Something would happen to somebody anyway. But some of the things are preventable. I am so sad that we, we are losing, and all the people we are losing are, are, are things that I believe we could have prevented. You know. So, uh, condolences to his family. And let all of us begin to learn some very useful lessons. Let's begin to learn to take care of ourselves. It is important. As for death, it will come when it will. But sometimes it is preventable. It is preventable. And or delayed. Yeah, it, sometimes it is preventable, you know. So um, it's, 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 it's bad, but... Let's all learn some lessons. Let it let 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 the death of Kaba, let the death of Alaji Baturi just stir up something in all of us that we should we should be a little bit more careful about our health. We should learn to exercise, just walk, not do any magical things. If you go to the hospital and check your health status, it is helpful. It is indeed. My view is that the National Health Insurance should even pay, you know, because they will tell you that prevention is better than cure. If you are found to have high blood pressure, which is sustained over a period, and you are managed, you, you can live some very useful life. Okay. So, but going back to the, to the substantive issue, uh, I, I think the challenge we have had is that we have not been able to move along with modernity in some of the things. Indeed, the elders had a lot of wisdom, or they exercised a lot of wisdom 100 or 200 years ago, according to the state of knowledge. Look, these things that we do here are not peculiar to us as Africans. Mm. In medieval Europe, many of the things that we talked about was also practiced. Okay. Don't go, to, don't go fishing on a particular day. It was only to help preserve the fish stock. You can't do the thing every day. So you have to dedicate some... Yeah, they will tell you you don't, farm, you don't farm by the riverside. Oh, it was because they had noticed that you needed a cover yeah. to protect the river from evaporation. <laughs> uh, if you have a menstrual period. At the time, 200 years ago, maybe we were not handling it well. We didn't have all the sophistication of... Uh, uh, the current sophistication to manage... The blood flow. All right. So they'll say, don't go into the river if you have a menses. And, and the only way our system of belief is that the gods forbid it. So you don't go because, like he said, I remember when we were kids and we go from Kumasi to visit my grandmother in Otropwe. We, you will go into the, to the lake or the river to fetch water. You will have to walk into it. And there was a certain possibility 
of contamination with the with the blood flow. All right. So there was a, in in that period with the state of knowledge. Uh, uh, it was it was it was okay. And I believe that the issue about the gods forbidding and all of this was, was uh, you know, human beings are sometimes difficult. And you need, you need the supernatural, even today. God is used several <laughs> times to, to, to religion, check us in. Religion puts, yeah. a, puts fear in us. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You see some high intellectual. It's religion that would take yes, us. Yes, it's, it's yeah. absolutely. So, uh, but does it still, does it still work? Is it relevant? To the Is time? it still relevant? But uh, you know, these are cultural norms, and for me, we should not we should not disregard or disrespect the traditionalist. If we want to change it, it is all about engaging appropriately. Uh, the girls that will cross the offing to go to school, I believe, will not walk through the river now. Mm -hmm. There may be a small bridge mm -hmm. they will walk over. Mm -hmm. So the 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 case of contamination does not exist. Okay. So if we need to go and pacify the gods and say, uh, so that we will take the, we will mm -hmm. take the stick out of the way mm -hmm. for something like mm -hmm. this to happen. I think we should, th this, this should be, this should be done so that we will, we will do that. We will, we will, the appropriate thing will be done. I mean, if you, if you don't go to school, I mean, these these people in the in in some of the rural areas, you go to school five days a week, and you are still failing. Then you are you are now they are telling you now you only do school four days in a week, and uh, one week out one of week out of uh, every, every month, month you can't go to school. I mean, they are consigning you to a certain failure. You yeah. understand? Consistent. So, I, I believe that hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, when these were instituted, there was cause. Today. Uh, by virtue of advancement in technology, uh, we can move on. But I maintain that if we are going to do this, we must engage properly. We must engage the traditional authority properly so that it will not look like uh, anybody is belittling anything. Okay, let's move on. We're, we're, we're talking you, about... Bro, before you go, but let me also say this. You I wanted mean, to add go. something. No, I wanted um, to move on. So I, that guess, you, I, so guess, I just want to say that, you see, that's the problem I have sometimes when I talk about people. Because of my profession, I do. As a journalist, what you have to do when you're writing a story like this is go behind the news. Find out the why, the, yeah, why these things were put. Not up, just report know. that they said. Yes, you know. It would be like so somebody that you put the story in contest. In contest. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's what I believe we should be I doing. Agree. I agree. Yeah. Ghana's agree. controversial agreement with the United States of America for hosting two former... Uh, Guantanamo Bay detainees, uh, we call them the Gitmo 2, effectively apparently ended uh, January 6, 2016. And the two detainees, Mahmoud Umar Mohammed bin Atef and uh, Khalid Mohammed Sal al Dabi, uh, who were in detention for 40 years after being linked with terrorist group Al Qaeda, were brought to Ghana in 2016. And we know the Buhahai generated for a period of two years. It's, uh, they were released as part of efforts to close down the U.S operator of Guantanamo Bay Prison, which is known to have had a questionable human rights record uh, after various Senate findings over the years. Now, um, two citizens, um, we, we know that uh, Nanabi and Margaret Bamfo sued the former Attorney General and Interior Minister, uh, f contending that the two were being hosted illegally, etc. And, and here we are today. I, I start with you, Mr. Chairman Tingejako. Gitmo and the time that they have to be in Ghana, it's ended and the controversy thereof. But we also know we needed to maintain a certain relationship with the United States. But here we are. Well, uh, let, let, me, let me emphasize again that I have a lot of respect for Nana Boache and uh, the, the lady. As far as I'm concerned, uh, we, we must... I, I respect them because, you know, they tested the situation the, the, in the law court. And I think time has come for us to test all the constitutional provisions in the law court. We should, we should uh, sometimes I think people exercise undue discretion. And, uh, and, 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 and for me, it sets out uh, a good cause for uh, 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 democracy. Uh, long and short, the agreement has come to an end. 
I am not too sure what what the termination clauses in this agreement. There must be some termination clauses at the end of, of the agreed period. What what do the parties do? I am not certain. Is it renewable? Or is it renewable at, at the end of it? Uh, are they supposed to go back to their own countries? Or I think that we should look at what what the agreement provides for and do just that. I mean, if 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 the two gentlemen have been of good behavior, and 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 they and their sponsors want to apply to live here uh, as asylum seekers, and the government f feels that they they deserve to live here as refugees, uh, so be it, uh, provided that the system validates. I, and I want to emphasize that the system validates that they pose no threat whatsoever to the state security. Okay. If the agreement provides that after, at the end of their, their stay here, uh, they should be sent back to their country, that is what the agreement provides for. And we should just do what the agreement says. I, I, I must admit that I am not privy to what the, what, what the, what the closing uh, clauses in the uh, agreement says. So I, I would only want to emphasize that I think it is proper for us to do, to, 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 to fully uh, do what the agreement provides for. Mm. Yeah, Roland, um, this is an interesting issue because uh, I sit here and uh, I, I, I feel sad because I've maintained that in this country, we politicize things that we are not supposed to politicize. Certain things are done in the interest of our international protocols and agreements with certain countries. Sometimes some of these things need not to be overtly politicized and publicized because of the international implications. So when this thing happened, I remember very well, these of consultations were done behind closed doors. But some people decided to play politics with it. And I have it right. I have a yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll have and, and, and and it became almost like Ghana, uh, the president has mortgaged the destiny of this country for money. That's what people said. Which that president? President Mahama okay. at that time had gone for money and brought the Gitmo to to Ghana. And so many things were said. I felt sad around that time. In fact to the extent that me myself the things were said so much that I, I, I one day drove straight and went to the old man and said, no more. Who's the old man? I, I mean, the president. Ah, okay. I said, no more. This thing. Oh, yeah, he's coming. Look came on me. You understand? I, 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 I felt so uncomfortable with the way things were being. And I know that even when you are in government, there are certain things that you may not be privy to. Because sometimes the, it is to who should know basis. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not it's strictly need to know. Yes. But it's yeah, there's no way you know. So I thought that maybe there's something that had been discussed that by my position I wasn't part of the need to know group. So I wasn't. For, so I wanted to have more because I was going on television and radio and I didn't know what to say. You understand? People so, were saying things as if they knew yeah, more yeah. than you knew. Yeah. Okay. So um, and I was in government, so I was a bit surprised. But today, I'm very happy that I, may, I remember very well when we came to, when, when the, the MPP came to power, the, 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 the minister had to come in and say that the agreement had to be uh, respected. I don't know. I said, oh. So, you see, but the difficulty I have is that sometimes, you see, we, the political leadership, may not be the people who fund these things. But when our people are finding it, we don't also come out to give our, let me say, opinion or uh, your contrite view on it. On it, to 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 stem the tide. Knowing what the situation situation is, but because it's in near to our benefit politically and our propaganda, we we'll just keep quiet. For the public, we allow opinion. it to go, <laughs> and then say, oh, but uh, it is not it's not a statement from government. It's not a statement from the for the party, so why do you, oh, if some communicator is saying, but what a communicator is saying, 
will have adverse effects on the general political conclusions about you. So I think that what has happened, well, it has happened. I'm saying as a country, we should be learning lessons on the issues that we need to politicize and the things that we need to. I think where we have gotten to today, after what I saw last time at the anniversary, the 25th anniversary On of Sunday. the Fourth Republic, last mm. Sunday, with all the ex-presidents coming there, reading Bible, these things, on a platform, one platform, should be an indication to us that this country is growing beyond politics. And as such, it's not everything that we need to politicize. That when certain things happen, we should, even, even if we are in opposition, let's engage government to know why government has taken this decision in our interest. Because for all you know, tomorrow you may come to either sustain mm -hmm. and perpetuate that particular policy or <coughs> you may review it. Okay. So it is important. Today um, we've got full cycle. The agreement has ended. Like my brother said, if the agreement necessitates that the people must be reverted to their country, to America, so be that. No, no, they are, they are, they are from the Middle East. Actually. Yes, they are from Yemen. Yemen, Yemen. is even not stable. They are yeah. being bombarded by Saudi Arabia. That is, that is, that is the issue now. Forces, we're told. So what we are saying that uh, uh, <laughs> in, in international protocol, sometimes the the interest and the welfare of the person is important. Mm. Yeah, oh, if the person may, may, his life may be at risk if you he don't return take to his country, yeah. then we have to look at it. I'm saying, like he said, if these people have lived in this country, pose no threat whatsoever. And they lived as very good citizens of Ghana, in quotes. Then I don't see why we cannot continue to let them stay there. Look, there are Ghanaians who are living in other countries as political refugees. So up to this day, up to this day, even when we have Ghana is the most hospitable and the most peaceful in, in the whole world. That's a claim to me. political asylum. Yes, people are still people are not, They asylum. are not being granted now, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello, you they are not being granted now. For good uh, reasons, they will, they, will, they will want to. Now, so now they, they will go and see that they yeah, are being persecuted because LGBT. they are yeah, LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> so it's move of politics to LGBT. Yeah. So I'm saying that we should look at it. And if the, it's good that Parliament ratified that mm. agreement. So what the minister will need to do is possibly come to Parliament and ask for an extension of that Agreement. Okay. So we could have. But this even reminds me. This one is not. This one on IMF. Mm. The, posi the position of the opposition then, and then also on chocolates. <laughs> you know, uh, the wrapping and putting images, etc. <laughs> but even if you are, if you have if you are not raised, I was going to talk about. Uh, this. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we know that w the a position of a state. Bec becomes binding on all parties, whether you are in office or not. Um, but at what point do we decide that politically we want to be objective and uh, perhaps also look at issues in the interests of the country? Roland, you know, I, I, I sit here, I, I think I was at pains to, to point out yes, you do. that any decision government takes must be in conformity with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. To the extent that government does anything which is not in conformity with the Constitution, the Constitution itself says it is void of initial. I don't believe that the issues about the Gitmo was to seek for political advantage. The issue was that we were saying that when you want to do this, it is an agreement that must come to Parliament. And this is exactly what the Supreme Court confirmed. I think the thrust of our conversation here is that it was politicized. Well, I, I because, mean... Because, because I, the opposition I, I, could have raised that without making a political yeah. meal out of it. Oh, who made the political meal? We didn't make a political meal. The opposition meal. did. Yeah, we, I, I, we were in opposition then. But we stated the facts. I think that governments in, in their thinking that they knew all and could do all thought. Thought that no, we, we are government, we have taken the decision. You see, if governments then had, had, had consulted properly, they probably would have done the needful. Indeed, my, 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 what I have learned is that they didn't, this matter could just have come to, to the Defense and Interior Committee that will sit in camera, okay, mm -hmm. and just present. A report without giving out too much details if it was considered as 
we needed to, to keep some quiet about it. But government did not do it. Our position was very clear. You know, what is politics? When I say and you say and I say you say, then it becomes political. But of course, at the end of the day, we needed the, the courts to determine the exact position. And the court did that. I mean, I don't think that we politicize this for advantage. We, we did what was needful. We did what was right. People came to parliament with placards. Get me to placards in parliament. Yeah, because you are breaking the law. <laughs> and is that a way to resolve that? You were breaking the law, my dear friend. The executive decisions that are taken in the interest. And so, then so now, parliament ratified later so by now, parliament. Now, the you were breaking the parliament. law. What did the Supreme Court, what did the apex court of this land say? Did it say you are right or the position that we took was right? The Supreme Court confirmed the position we took. No. I think that this is behind us. I don't think anybody was playing politics. Look, all of us, His Excellency the President then, Don Dramani Mahama, on, on the 7th of March 2013, swore on the Bible to defend the Constitution. S I am not a lawyer, but, but if you... 7th of January. I am not a lawyer. But if you swear to, to defend the Constitution and you breach the Constitution, no, it, it forms the Constitution. a basis the Constitution for impeachment. gives him executive powers. It gives so him executive powers. But the executive and power is within... Ratify in Parliament later. Yeah, so why didn't he bring it to Parliament? Well, that's what we said. We said, look, at the time the thing was done, my, we were waiting my, for the next my. session of Parliament. So the thing will be brought to Parliament for I don't think that was. I don't think that was the argument. Did you, 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 you stated, anyway, I'm happy you, stated, you said we've, we've gone right we now. Stated, you so stated what do we do with them then? No, I am saying, oh, I think that we have agreed yeah. on this position. But uh, there, must be, there must be clauses in the agreement. I don't think it was open-ended. So they must just ask the, just as, excuse me. I think we should just follow uh, the agreement. I, I, I really have to, I must, I must admit that I am not privy to the agreement. I haven't read the agreement. I'm not even inquired about it. So I may not be able to speak about it, but I, I maintain that an agreement, like we say, an agreement is an agreement. I, I think I and saw, I didn't see any specific clause on renewal. I didn't see, I, I, I may be wrong, but I didn't really see. But, but Roland, the point I really that. wanted to make mm -hmm. was my good friend Neil Ante is sitting here uh, attempting to, uh, yes. you are the same people who said it was no good, now you, they, they, the, the attempted general came and said uh, mm. the agreement must go on. Mm. Government is a continuum. You went and agreed to it. So now it's not binding. Yeah, it is binding on the state. <laughs> and the state right. is not an MPP state or an NDC state. The state, the Republic of Ghana is a state. Yeah. You went and signed an extended credit facility mm -hmm. agreement with the IMF. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it, was not, it was not John Dramani Mahama who went to sign yeah, it. Ghana it was it. Ghana that signed it. I'm happy you are saying this. But then your own people and, appoint, and opposition and then yes. said, well, bye. You've been trafficking. Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody said. Nobody uh, said. But uh, uh, when we came, we have, re, we have renegotiated yes, some I'm of it. Yes, I'm saying what before. You are going to do PSP. The, uh, 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 you, you signed a compact. Mm -hmm. Since we came, we have... We have renegotiated I'm, I'm part of the that, compact. I'm, I'm saying that. So when you're in a position <laughs> and you are going to take right. certain decisions or criticize or certain things, you must be careful because those things possibly will be hanging around your neck and you cannot do anything about it. So let's, let's avoid a way where we go on political platforms and try to play to the gallery and say, yeah, bah, you better be actually... Oh, but they play. Be so, uh, uh, we are be saying that. Anyway, anyway, let's move very on. Let's No, Roland, it's very important to me. Let's move on. No, it's very Let's important. We're talking AM, 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 AM strikes. Roland. AM, AM strikes. <laughs> no, it's almost AM, AM, AM is just like what we are discussing. Oh, no, no, that's the same on. thing. Roland, AM, AM you AM mentioned strikes. this they are, Coco, Coco they, Board thing. They are crammed ah, metropolitan. What about Coco Board? Yeah, when they Chief are, Executive go to brand chocolates with he, him, himself, <laughs> yeah. his picture and everything to which yes. people... Uh, uh, what of it? Is it not wrong? No, why is it wrong? Why is it not wrong? That, that the Cocoa Board belongs to the Chief Executive. Ah, but the Lodina Mahama also... You remember when the special one was done for Lodina Mahama? You, you see, let's... The let's, president let's, and the wife. Let's make a very clear... in this country. Let's make, same let's make a very about. clear distinction. People criticize the president let's, and the wife. Let's make if a... the Primus in the Paris, mm -hmm. who is a reflection of the state, eh? mm -hmm. it's, it's not... It's not... Uh, it's, not it's wrong for him to have put his picture and the wife's picture on the chocolate. What makes it right today that the chief executive well, of Cocoa Board, what, 
and Pope, not President Kufado. No, wait. Is it CPC, a, CPC says it's, it's a policy. It's a it's business a, policy. It's a business policy. Mm. So why was it criticized the last time? It's a business policy. Something wrong with this a few they, years ago they, can be justified. It has today. always been a this policy, is, but this is what now Kudu, it's been resuscitated. This is what Kudu Open Kumar is saying. They that are, appointees of government they are metropolitan stop embarrassing assembly. the government and making things difficult for government. They are crime metropolitan assembly. Yesterday oh, began Roland, a, you major, to, you a major to, you want this thing up. A, a major I know my brother will criticize it. Uh, uh, my brother will make sure we say that what the chief executive has done. They are crime metropolitan go assembly. Go <laughs> But was Van der Point? No, let's agree that what the Chief Executive has done was Van Pete. Should, should, should necessarily to a, to a, to a, to a, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly yesterday began a major decongestion exercise to to clear filth and, and traders from the streets of the national capital of Accra <laughs> to restore the beauty of the city and allow for free flow of traffic, both human and vehicular. Yes. Honorable Jaco is starting. No, I start with me. You. Mm. Okay, if you're starting with me, then let me say that. First, before I go on, I, be, I demand that the Minister of Agriculture and Cocoa Affairs take immediate step to deal and make sure the Chief Executive of the Ghana Cocoa Board. What has he done wrong? For putting his image. <laughs> it's and a policy of the CPC. Ghana's policy. You know, I, you know, CPC has issued a If he doesn't do it, I'm going to I'm going to ask a question, a question in Parliament when Parliament resumes on oh, this issue. The, I'm I, serious. I, I think it's a moot question because it is not a the moot CPC, question. It is important. CPC Look, has come out with a policy. The they even board that's yesterday in the find that they came out with the price quotes CPC, for, for each CPC, customized CPC branded CPC chocolate is supposed that you to want. Manage Manage cocoa products on behalf Did of you read the finder yesterday? Did you read the finder? Have I you contacted it. the public affairs I'm department that, of uh, I'm saying CPC. that, look, didn't DVLA justify why they, are, they, were, they, were, they were selling the first aid kits? What? Has the government come out to say that? We're talking about AMA strikes. You know, I'm saying that when some AMA, the AMA the has cleared payments of government, of traders, of government and of traders is causing too much hawkers. problem for government. And like Andrawuni said, government must begin to have. But Vampi, now you are not respecting my, my powers. I'm a mo the moderator. Now deal with I this one. Let's go. <laughs> you see, then you talk about politics. You know, this I'm one, what he's doing is like he has prepared to answer a question on, with it. on, on the forest. Yes. And then you have asked a question on football. Uh, and so he now he's saying that and the football was played into <laughs> the, the forest. forest. <laughs> and now all he wants to talk about is the forest. And yeah. Mr. Jaku has to run to the forest and bring the ball back. <laughs> But let's talk about the traders. Anyway, I, I know um, I know all the convictions you have about the chocolate issue because I th thank you. Uh, everybody, I think people think it's double standard and all that. But just go on. Um, I will say that um, it's a very difficult situation for the mayor of Accra, a young man carrying this show. This, this, Nia this Mohammed Nia yeah, uh, on his shoulder. I I just want to start by saying that I wish him well in this exercise. It's something that to me. Let me be frank with you. In as much as I sympathize with the many young men and women who sell on the pavements, I think the nuisance of traffic should be preserved. Nowhere in the world, nowhere, nowhere in the world will you allow people to virtually take over the streets. You, pa you drive through Accra now, and almost virtually half of the street, people are selling coconuts. The in the middle of the road. The you people understand? It's a There's post. so much indiscipline going on no, as far traffic as traffic lights. So between uh, um, hockey pitch or ECG or former PWD and Rollins Park, it will take you an hour. If assuming you have something to do within that period and get back to your office. I remember when I used to work at PNT. At that time, then, then post at the. You, we, we virtually we have to walk and go and have naturally eat something during the break and get back. Within five minutes, you are back in the office. Today, even walking, you spend close about 30 minutes because the place is so choked that you, you, you virtually have to, uh, let me say, heckle your way through. Why? This cannot continue. Two, under the previous administration, Oko Van der Poel's time, I was part of a team. We took this issue on board. And so we went, demarcated a place beyond which these hawkers and these traders cannot go. It's been abused. It's been wantonly abused. And I'm happy this exercise is happening in Kumase too. Because I was in Kumase. It happened in Kumase. Yeah. I, I hear in Kumase, they're Edu, coming back. 
Pam Pam So area near the Kotoko Secretariat. It's amazing. It's even it's it's worse than Accra. So I was asking myself because those days in Kumasi it's only towards a um, uh, uh, Ro Roman Hill that you see those things. Yeah. But now the whole Doom area. Even people who are with the banks and the institutions, their offices, the front of have been taken over. And you see, apart from the inconvenience to motorists, it's a very serious security threat. Because anybody at all could stab somebody within, tra within the, the, the congestion, could do anything to anybody because of the congestion people do not see. And that's why it also gives the, the, the incidence of pickpocketing and the rest around these areas. So I think that as far back as 1962, I know Sajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah embarked on a policy of break, what we, he, he termed as breaking the tension in Accra. And the, I was told by Sonny Provisa that time, it's my political godfather those days when he was alive. I go to him to polish his shoes and he would tell me all this is about the CPP government and all those things. Kwame Nkrumah's intention was to move a lot of the business activities from the central part of Accra out in order that the tension in Accra will move. But people have taken over that. I remember that I, I latched onto that book and that uh, paper when I was um, uh, helping uh, Solomon Fedakon that time until I was politically hounded out of AMA, you know, those days. And Osel Fedakon uh, was on a tangent to really pursue it's a plan that, that yes, to pursue because he, because of his plan, uh, his yeah. background as a planner, really wanted to take up that document. No, no matter if you also had it, but for the political. So what I am praying for Ajesoa is that politically, he will be allowed to do his work, <laughs> because it is not the mayors, the past mayors who were not efficient in that. Yes. They had good intentions. Even Ajay Blansing was stopped. He was the first one who started this mass. Yes. Even though we had Sally for Amankwa and the rest. Yes. Tried, I did following Blansi's, Amang, I did took a fuse. pragmatic step towards. In fact, no. It was first Yiti Mensa when he constructed the hawker's market first at Agbo sure, sure, sure. Even though he took away our football field, Stamford's Park. You know, and that's what has led to Old Fadama. And then Ajib Blansi also came and with the hawker's mall at Kwame Nkuma Circle, which was a very pragmatic step towards addressing this issue. They don't want to go there. Mm. But I'm it's saying that Abdi Blansing was virtually stopped during the 2005 by-election. No, we do understand Dodo. the other point. Yeah. So I'm saying that Okofo Napoi, you remember when Oko was going there? Some members, some people within our own party, was on, they were on radio saying all sorts of things about Oko. When we're struggling for power, where was he? Mm. That he has come and he wants to spoil things for us. He wants to put sand in our gary. And I know some people will be saying it to Ajesova tomorrow. Because all these people, people, you see, people always want to think about the next vote election. before development. I think that we must look at what we will do always to project our country as a very good environment for doing business and, a, 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 let me say, a developing country. But when we continue to think about the next election, the next election, the next election, we will lose touch on very important, pragmatic, sustainable policies. And I pray. I pray that people like Mr. Jaku, who are also members of the assembly, will give their support. I will give my support, though. But I will say that, in saying that, I will say that the whole idea about the rebuilding of the Salaga market was to address this problem. So I'm begging the government that they should, the Salaga market, contractor was procured, sword was cut, money was available. If we can go back and build a Salaga market, then we can move these people to the Salaga market and free Accra of its traffic. Hmm. If we don't do it, I'm not sure that the number of people we have on the street now, the hawker small, even if they should go back, will be enough for them. Because now we, we have uh, a central business district in which we have uh, big traders, they have huge warehouses outside. But their stalls in the central business district have become warehouses too. So they also commission hawkers to 
take yeah, retail. the west out mm. to go and retail mm. because if they want to remain in their shops nobody will come in there yeah but uh, mm. how does this compare with the best developed jurisdictions we have what, 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 what? Because I know, oh, oh, certainly, I, I know. Certainly, there's no. You don't even talk about the best developed jurisdictions. Talk about Abidjan and even Lagos. Yes, even Lagos. What Fashola did in Lagos? Even ah. Lagos, in places like Oshodu, uh -huh. it was impossible. But a governor came and said, "We cannot allow this to go." I mean, this thing we are doing is not sustainable. Eventually, now we have to cross all the roads in uh, Accra mm. and say, let them, let's turn it into markets. Then there will be no roads. The ambulances can't drive. Uh, the president can't drive. Nothing, nothing will happen. For our service. <laughs> Absolutely nothing will happen. I think that I can completely agree that we have played too much politics with this matter. I am a politician. I know. When, 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 the, when I heard that something like this was going on, in Accra, I became a little disconcerted. You know, hey, Minister Dene, what is this man <laughs> going to bring here now? <laughs> and when you watch TV, you hear the people, uh, we voted for you. You will see what we will do next time. It has happened maybe from E.T. Mesa's time. But I think that maybe what we need to do is, is, is to do a bipartisan thing. Agree on a bipartisan thing. Yeah, frankly, I can completely agree. Sometimes we over-politicize issues in this country. This one, it is not politics. If we don't do this, look, if we don't do this, we will not have a city. Really and truly, we will not have a city. The other thing I want to also emphasize is, you know, my good friend is talking about let's do salary markets. Yes, I agree. If a market must be done, it must be done. But I don't think that if we don't change the attitude, if we don't tell people you cannot sell on the street, build salary, they will come back here. Because, you know, anybody who comes from anywhere, the reason why this thing happens is that anybody who wants, who comes from all the outlying areas to buy something in Accra, Okanshi, whether it's medicines or anything, it has become the hub of, of business activity. So, I think the market is developing around there. When people come from Sajiri or so or, or Tepa to Accra to get west, they, they, they most probably will find it in the Okanshi area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is why all the uh, 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 ancillary trade. When, the, when, when I come from Probodumase to go and buy stocks for my shop, mm -hmm. when I come, I want to eat or I want to drink some coconut water. So you create a, a, an ancillary market for all of these things. Until and unless we are able to break this monopoly and people can stop in Medina and find the things at the same price as they will find in Accra, these things will continue. We must find a way decentralization. You, you said that Nkrumah in 1962 mm -hmm. was talking about moving, moving re re reducing the tension in Accra. We must go back to these things. Look, we, we must create viable markets in, in, in London market. I hear it's not working now. I hear Tuesday market, I, I hear it's not working. When I was a young man and I was working in Kolebu, it was a viable market. But I hear it's not working. People don't go, they still want to come to, uh, because when the people bring the cocoa yam and the plantains, they, everybody loads it off at Agbogloshi. And they will have to come and take it from, from Agbogloshi to Tuesday market. There is an added cost. So there is, so they, then they will tend to come to the source until and unless we can find a way around it. Find by a way around by, all by of this. Bipartisanly. Do, do, do you think that if we start um, electing maybe mayors or MMDCs, that I, I don't think that it that will, in itself will, will solve, solve the problem. problem. Because no. then it's the same thing. Where yeah. I don't think that, yeah. look, uh, like you were saying, we must find, we must begin to replan the city. Yeah. We must begin to make uh, 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 Medina as important as yeah. Okaishi. Yeah. Yeah. We must find a way to make uh, Abang Kobi. Or um, probably somewhere yes. there. So that whatever so, you find in Central B, you can yeah, find in Medina Market. I mean, markets. you are talking about in other jurisdictions. Mm. Anybody who lives in London, you know, 
I know people who have lived in in London. They've in never Paris. gone outside. They have never gone to the central uh, to do what? They live in South For example, London. Where I stay, where I stay in Aplaku, why will I come to Abu Goshen buy? I drive to the market, the uh, Malam Junction market, yeah. uh, the new Abu Goshen number two. I buy everything I want there. I drive myself. I park, go there, buy things. I just drive back to the house. Less than ten minutes. Why will I come to Abu Yeah. So we, ne we need to develop peripheral markets. That, that's the way. Peripheral markets. And make it as attractive. attractive. Indeed, in some of the places. You know, we are talking about best. I, I am told that in the, the rents in central London are so high. that like if you go to, a, a, to some of these shops, it is, it is slightly cheaper to go to, to Ilford. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we must make a black home market a lot more attractive than anybody to come to. Consider the time, the, the patrol, the... Just, you, you asked, Roland, you asked about advanced jurisdictions. Abruptly. If Dubai. they have found a way to do this, we must find a way to oh, do this. If you go China, the same. Yeah. China. They have, they have bigger, markets. more crowded markets than yes. us. But, but it's well organized. Yes. So I'm saying that when we're growing up... It doesn't up, affect like the city if, at all. No, if you ask me, when we're growing up... you go to Beijing... When we're growing up, there's so. no way you buy fish at Makola. If you want fish, it is Alaga market. Yeah. yeah. If you want this, it is this market. Abogloshi, so people, drive, people go to a particular market because they're looking for a particular product. Yeah. So there was some organized system. Today but today, today even even they used to say if you want force, you go to Katamanto. Katamanto. Now they or are Tema even Station. a rolling circle. All of them. So rolling so, park people so, are selling so, there. So now you now you don't even have to go to Katamanto. They go. They've they've brought the thing forward. To, I don't understand. So that is a, there is lack of discipline and organization. My time is up, within a system. but I have about uh, six to eight minutes. You you all know um, um, this organization called Human Rights Watch. Human Rights Watch. You yeah. know Human Rights Watch. Yeah, you want to talk about this? I have about eight minutes. I think it's a big international organization. Fantastic. Uh, Human what Rights Watch. They they, they, a total of 114 Ghanaians who are lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, have narrated widespread discrimination and abuses meted out to both of them in public and in family settings. 140. I'm, I'm 140. I'm raising oh, this because... Oh, they are insignificant. The two of you are... You, <laughs> you, you, oh, you, have, you have an insert on social media that is indicating a lot. The Human Rights Watch that said... They said they, who, who has discriminated <laughs> against them? This is the state of Ghana. State. Oh, and who? <laughs> Go on. You mentioned something. Human Rights Watch said it interviewed the 114 LGBT people in Accra, yeah. Tamale, Kumasi, and Cape Coast yeah. in 2016 and February yeah. 2017. Yeah. It's in a, in a report. Yes. And it it says, who discriminated against them? It says, it says communities, Community. chiefs, chiefs. Um, their families. Their families. <laughs> Even their own families. Their own brothers and sisters completely disapprove of the things they are doing. And apparently we have 30,000. But you can't keep discriminating against 30,000. 17% of them are living with HIV in Ghana, for example. If people live with HIV, let's, let's uh, manage it. Yes, but because they are gays, they can't come out. Who said? It's not true. It's not for true. example, a mother organized a mob to beat uh, her lesbian daughter in 2016 in a village outside Kumasi. A mother? I, I mean, you, you see, I will have done this, the same, this, this thing. I will have done the same to my Roland, daughter. Roland, <laughs> I will have done Roland, to my daughter. But this is not Roland. <laughs> the mother completely disapproves of what the daughter is doing. The, the daughter can do it, but the ostracization is not the state. It is. It is, we talked about the cultural norms The social cultural set. What can anybody do? But this offends our, See, our multilateral Roland, partners. Roland, 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 even in the U.S. I'm saying this offends even our multilateral in the partners. US and, yes, I'm happy you read that. Even in the U.S. and the U.K., how many people courageously are able to come out and say, I am gay? It is not... Uh, how yeah. many people? It took this guy on CNN. Yeah. Yes! Anderson Cooper. Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Cooper. Yes! And even that when he said he, he was reluctant, there has been uh, about two, three sportsmen, I cannot guess their names of, who, yes, it's after they've retired, several years before they before they came out and said, we be, we uh, uh, Roland, you see, me, even in those societies. It, but me, another thing is that, <laughs> what is, what is, then, 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 you know that if you live in those areas and you are a polygamist, 
you will be you will be sent to court. They must also relax because then they will be infringing on the on the rights of, of, of those people want to be polygamous there. Yeah, true. If, if I hear that and, in and all of those places they have removed all their restrictions. All their restrictions on an issue like polygamy, then you can begin to accept that it is it is across board. Their own social cultural norms forbid them. What about their racism? You understand? Today, people are demonstrating, yeah, yeah. demonstrating, demonstrating about racism. There, even America. So, 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 so you can't take away me, me to tell you the truth. I, I am completely, in, if you want, if that is. Go Human on, rights, go, what? Look, if that's the life you want to live. If that's fine. the life you want to live, you can go ahead. But I shouldn't mean. <laughs> Don't, no, but don't impose don't we, it on us. Don't we think it is time for us to look at means of legalizing? I am saying right. that I am saying that if we want to, if we don't want to have restrictions, then let's remove all the restrictions. I find it offensive that you put a restriction on one thing and you think that as for the other thing, we shouldn't put a restriction on. I am saying, I am stating that let us let us legalize polygamy in 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 some of the places that are shouting at the top of their voices. Is it not the human rights? Roland. Eventually, let's ask for polyandry. You understand? If that is what we want to do, let's begin to ask that a man can marry a dog. Let's begin to ask for all of those things. <laughs> is it not a human right? They are, they are even doing it. <laughs> Roland, mind this thing is that, look, Ghana is different from any other country. We have our own social cultural values that we ad ad adhere to, respect. We have our social norms, and those are the things that make us a society and make us a family and a group, a community. So that if I move straight from my community into Onabwe Jaku's community, I know that the things that I'm not supposed to do in my community, I cannot do in, those communi in that community too. So it is important that that makes us unique and different. So if our society and our families, because in Ghana, you are not on your own. You belong to a family. As I sit here, no matter who I am, I belong to a family. He belongs to a family, you belong to a family. So if my family trend does not permit me to do certain things, I don't think that it is for any politician or anybody to decide for me what I should do. Are you Families will continue to fight. Are you still on recess? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. They call us back home. Oh, oh, uh, and, uh, uh, yeah. and, and if, if I'm not careful, we'll call you back again. I oh, wanted us to the, discuss Over it. the cocoa board issue. Go, go, go. <laughs> the, the, chocolate. the chocolate. Okay, so I've had in the studio Emmanuel Chamantinge Jakum. He's a member of parliament for Ewasu West Ward constituency. Uh, he's very much familiar with Lagos <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> we have a woman there who is roasting plantain on Lagos Avenue called Yabedu. Yabedu, good morning. Uh, Yabedu's son. Yabedu is a, is, is a happy yes, woman. Yeah, Yabedu's son has just, has just resumed. School. He's just gone to school. Yeah. Free SHS. If, if, it was not, if it was not free SHS, <laughs> Yabadu would be in my house at 4 o'clock in the I morning. I tell you. Uh -huh. And then we also have uh, <laughs> oh. Neil and Tim Van is a member of parliament for the Odo 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 constituency. But let's look at this. Three military officers and a police officer are receiving treatment at the Presbyterian Hospital in Agogo, in the Ashanti region, after armed nomadic headsmen ambushed and opened fire on them. And the officers who are members of the Operation Cowlick team are said to have been shot from behind after they responded to a distress call from a farmer over the destruction of a farm by the cattle.